Alright, hello everyone and welcome to WWE Discussion. I'm your host, WWE Dubious Dougie Dougie. Today's episode of WWE Discussion SmackDown, July 28th, 2023 edition. And this episode of SmackDown, well, it started with Jey Uso and Roman Reigns, and it ended with Jey Uso and Roman Reigns. And the rest of the show, well, didn't quite match up to the level of the bloodline. Rey Mysterio vs. Santos Escobar. That was a matchup I was looking forward to, and unfortunately, well, we didn't really quite get a full match between those two. There was apparently an injury angle run that kind of cut the match short in favor of Escobar, which, if that is part of a storyline, I'd be very curious to see what storyline that plays into, how that kind of plays out. So it's a shame that that match didn't get developed to its full potential, and hopefully, maybe we get a rematch down the line, but, uh, yeah, with that, we'll go ahead and get right into the action, starting with the opening segment, which had Jey Uso kicking off SmackDown, only to be interrupted by Roman Reigns. So this was great television, a promo segment that saw the champion do what he has done so often over the course of his career run, and that is try to manipulate his cousin Jay, only for Jay to turn the tables uh, this time around. But, yeah. Well, continue to turn the tables. Uh, Reigns this was visibly affected by Uso's threat and the fact that Jay felt powerful enough to grab the tribal chief by the neck. Proof of a man no longer uh, needing to be anyone's right hand man but rather a lone entity ready and able to end a thousand plus day run of dominance as champion. Um, whether he will is another question in uh, entirety too so Jay's got some momentum on his side but will it be enough to propel him forward uh, into some into some wrestling to beat Roman Reigns and I talked about you know Jay Uso kicking off Smackdown Jay Uso also let off the end of the show taking on Grayson Waller after a backstage interaction and Jay would get the victory here what was a competitive fun main event but the post match beat down well what started as a promising night for Jay ends with Roman and Solo sending a message um, with Roman reminding Jay who the champion and tribal chief currently is. Um, now next week's uh, ho- yeah next week's go home show could deter could deter predetermine who goes over in Detroit. Jay's got a little bit of momentum on his side, but Roman still looks very dominant as a champion with solo by his, especially with solo by his side. And also, let's give some credit to Grace Walter here. Uh, once again, put in the ring with experienced opposition and hanging in there. Uh, he's one of the more interesting and entertaining young stars in the company. And booking him against veterans and letting him learn on the letting him learn on the fly is hardly a bad thing. Yeah, sure, he's losing, but he looks good in defeat. I don't think his credibility is necessarily taking a hit uh, from these losses. So in conclusion, good start to the show, good end to the show, everything in between mid. Um, you know, the good was good, uh, including the in-ring portion of the Charlotte, of the, including the in-ring portion, uh, especially Charlotte Flair and Bianca Belair. Not really, didn't really like the tag team match, but again, uh, it was uh, good in-ring work in that tag team match, uh, even if the logic was nowhere to be found. I mean, seriously, tell me that the women's tag team titles are prop titles without telling me they're prop titles. I mean, Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville should not be losing to a makeshift tag team. I get that Flair and Fowler are the number one, the current contenders for the women's title, but, I mean, come on. Is it, <laughs> you're telling me there wasn't another makeshift team you could have put in there? I don't know. And then you had the uh, Rey Mysterio injury, which, which I, as I was seeing on the internet, is apparently part of the storyline, and I talked about it at the top. What exactly is that storyline that this injury would be a part of? Uh, very curious to see how that one plays out. Nonetheless, um, Escobar moves on to challenge theory the night before SummerSlam for the U.S. title, and Escobar is already one up. Um, curious to see if they uh, go through with it and have Escobar win the title and honestly I'm all for that. Look, Theory has been a champion um, but he hasn't been a memorable champion. I mean most people just can't. I mean Austin Theory is US champion but you might forget that he's US champion because it just his title reign just hasn't had the same spotlight that like Gunther's IC title run has had so it might be time to shake things up in the US title scene and put the title on somebody who's never held it before. Um, 
Nonetheless, there is room for improvement elsewhere, and the hype for SummerSlam, and the hype, and the hype for the SummerSlam card on this show was next to nothing, which is surprising given the magnitude of that show. Now, it's, now that probably will change next week uh, with what, is, what could be a special Friday night broadcast just 24 hours from the biggest party of the summer. And speaking of the biggest party of the summer, a battle royal was added to the SummerSlam card. Why, you might ask? Well, given that LA Knight is in it, it's probably number one, a way to get LA Knight on the SummerSlam card, and number two, a way to give LA Knight a win at SummerSlam. And you know what? I don't like battle royals. But hey, if it gets LA Knight on the card, and it gets LA Knight a win at SummerSlam, I'll, I'll let it slide. I'm okay with it. Shouldn't be a one-on-one -on -one match, but you know what? I'll take it. I'll take the Battle Royal, because yeah, you gotta have him on a SummerSlam card in some capacity. And uh, yeah, with well, that, that will conclude this episode of WWE Discussion. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to hit that like button down below.